Hasikhasm is a mystical tradition of contemplative prayer in the Eastern Orthodox Church. Based on Jesus' injunction in the Gospel of Matthew that, "...when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray." Hasikhasm in tradition has been the process of retiring inward by ceasing to register the senses, in order to achieve an experiential knowledge of God Etymology Meaning Hesychasm, Greek, hesychasmos contemporary Byzantine Greek pronunciation, isixa zmos, derives from the Greek hesychia, hesychia Greek pronunciation, isicia, stillness, rest, quiet, silence, and hesychazo Greek pronunciation, isizazo, to keep stillness. Usage Metropolitan Callistos Ware, a scholar of Eastern Orthodox theology, distinguishes five distinct usages of the term hasikasm. Solitary life, a sense, equivalent to eremitical life, in which the term is used since the 4th century. The practice of inner prayer, aiming at union with God on a level beyond images, concepts, and language. A sense in which the term is found in Evagrius Ponticus 345 to 399, Maximus the Confessor, c. 580 to 662, and Simeon the New Theologian, 949-1022. The quest for such union through the Jesus prayer, the earliest reference to which is in Diadochos of Photici, c. 450. A particular psychosomatic technique in combination with the Jesus prayer, use of which technique can be traced back at least to the 13th century. The theology of Saint Gregory Palamas, on which see Palamism. Topic: <laughs> History of the term. The origin of the term hesychasmos, and of the related terms hesychastes, hesychia and hesychazo, is not entirely certain. According to the entries in Lampsa Patristic Greek lexicon, the basic terms hesychia and hesychazo appear as early as the 4th century in such fathers as St. John Chrysostom and the Cappadocians. The terms also appear in the same period in Evagrius Ponticos c. 345 to 399 who although he is writing in Egypt is out of the circle of the Cappadocians and in the sayings of the desert fathers the term hesychast is used sparingly in Christian ascetical writings emanating from Egypt from the 4th century on although the writings of Evagrius and the sayings of the desert fathers do attest to it in Egypt the terms more often used are anchoritism gr and withdrawal retreat and anchorite gr anchorite one who withdraws or retreats i.e. a hermit the term hesychast was used in the 6th century in palestine in the lives of cyril of scythopolis many of which lives treat of hesychasts who were contemporaries of cyril here it should be noted that several of the saints about whom cyril was writing especially euthymios and zavash were in fact from cappadocia the laws novelli of the emperor justinian the first are 527 to 565 treat hesychast and anchorite as synonyms, making them interchangeable terms. The terms hesychia and hesychast are used quite systematically in the Ladder of Divine Ascent of Saint John of Sinai, 523 to 603, and in Prose Theodulon by Saint Hesychios, c. 750, who is ordinarily also considered to be of the school of Sinai. It is not known where either St. John of Sinai or St. Hesychios were born, nor where they received their monastic formation. It appears that the particularity of the term hesychast has to do with the integration of the continual repetition of the Jesus prayer into the practices of mental ascesis that were already used by hermits in Egypt. Hesychasm itself is not recorded in Lamp's lexicon, which indicates that it is a later usage, and the term Jesus prayer is not found in any of the fathers of the Church. St. John Cassian c. 
360 to 435 presents as the formula used in Egypt for repetitive prayer, not the Jesus prayer, but, O God, make speed to save me, O Lord, make haste to help me. By the 14th century, however, on Mount Athos the terms hesychasm and hesychast refer to the practice and to the practitioner of a method of mental ascesis that involves the use of the Jesus prayer assisted by certain psychophysical techniques. Most likely, the rise of the term hesychasm reflects the coming to the fore of this practice as something concrete and specific that can be discussed. Books used by the Hesychast include the Philokalia, a collection of texts on prayer and solitary mental ascesis written from the 4th to the 15th centuries, which exists in a number of independent redactions, the Ladder of Divine Ascent, the collected works of St. Simeon the New Theologian and the works of St. Isaac the Syrian 7th century, as they were selected and translated into Greek at the monastery of St. Zavash near Jerusalem about the 10th century. Topic Origins Topic Platonism Hesychastic practice involves acquiring an inner focus and blocking of the physical senses. In this, hesychasm shows its roots in Evagrius Ponticus and even in the Greek tradition of asceticism going back to Plato. Topic. Jewish Merkabah mysticism According to some of the adepts of the Jewish Merkabah mystical tradition, if one wished to «descend to the Merkabah», one had to adopt the prayer posture taken by the prophet Elijah in 1 Kings 18 verse 42, namely to pray with one's head between one's knees. This is the same prayer posture used by the Christian Hesychasts and is the reason that they were mocked by their opponents as naval gazers, omphalocycites. This bodily position and the practice of rhythmically breathing while invoking a divine name seems to be common to both Jewish Merkabah mysticism and Christian Hesychasm. Thus the practice may have origins in the ascetical practices of the biblical prophets. Alan Siegel in his book Paul the Convert suggests that the Apostle Paul may have been an early adept of Merkabah mysticism in which case what was novel to Paul's experience of divine light on the road to Damascus was not the experience of divine light itself, but that the source of this divine light identified himself as the Jesus whose followers Paul was persecuting. Daniel Boyeran notes that Paul's own account of this experience would therefore be the earliest first-person account of the mystical vision of a Merkabah adept. Topic. Gospel interpretation The Hesychast interprets Jesus' injunction in the Gospel of Matthew to "...go into your closet to pray," to mean that one should ignore the senses and withdraw inward. Saint John of Sinai writes, Hesychasm is the enclosing of the bodiless primary cognitive faculty of the soul orthodoxy teaches of two cognitive faculties, the nous and logos in the bodily house of the body. Practice Topic. Stages Theosis is obtained by engaging in contemplative prayer resulting from the cultivation of watchfulness GK, nepsis. According to the standard ascetic formulation of this process, there are three stages Catharsis or purification theory or illumination, and theosis or deification also referred to as union with God. Topic. Catharsis purification. Sobriety contributes to this mental ascesis that rejects tempting thoughts, it puts a great emphasis on focus and attention. The hesychast is to pay extreme attention to the consciousness of his inner world and to the words of the Jesus prayer, not letting his mind wander in any way at all. While he maintains his practice of the Jesus prayer, which becomes automatic and continues 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the hesychast cultivates nepsis, watchful attention, to reject tempting thoughts the thieves 
that come to the Hesychast as he watches in sober attention in his hermitage. Saint John of Sinai describes Hesychast practice as follows. Take up your seat on a high place and watch, if only you know how, and then you will see in what manner, when, whence, how many and what kind of thieves come to enter and steal your clusters of grapes. When the watchman grows weary, he stands up and prays, and then he sits down again and courageously takes up his former task. The hesychast is to attach eros, gr, eros that is, yearning, to his practice of sobriety so as to overcome the temptation to astia, sloth. He is also to use an extremely directed and controlled anger against the tempting thoughts, although to obliterate them entirely he is to invoke Jesus Christ via the Jesus prayer. Much of the literature of Hesychasm is occupied with the psychological analysis of such tempting thoughts e.g. St. Mark the Ascetic. This psychological analysis owes much to the ascetical works of Evagrius Pontikos, with its doctrine of the Eight Passions. Topic: Theoria Illumination. The primary task of the Hesychast is to engage in mental assesis. The Hesychast is to bring his mind gr, nous, into his heart so as to practice both the Jesus prayer and sobriety with his mind in his heart. In solitude and retirement, the Hesychast repeats the Jesus prayer, "Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, the sinner." The Hesychast prays the Jesus Prayer with the heart, with meaning, with intent, for real. Seontic. He never treats the Jesus Prayer as a string of syllables whose surface or overt verbal meaning is secondary or unimportant. He considers bare repetition of the Jesus Prayer as a mere string of syllables, perhaps with a mystical inner meaning beyond the overt verbal meaning, to be worthless or even dangerous. This emphasis on the actual, real invocation of Jesus Christ mirrors an Eastern understanding of mantra in that physical action, voice and meaning are utterly inseparable. The descent of the mind into the heart is taken quite literally by the practitioners of Hesychasm and is not at all considered to be a metaphorical expression. Some of the psychophysical techniques described in the texts are to assist the descent of the mind into the heart at those times that only with difficulty it descends on its own. The goal at this stage is a practice of the Jesus prayer with the mind in the heart, which practice is free of images see Prose Theodolon. By the exercise of sobriety the mental assesis against tempting thoughts, the hesychast arrives at a continual practice of the Jesus prayer with his mind in his heart and where his consciousness is no longer encumbered by the spontaneous inception of images, his mind has a certain stillness and emptiness that is punctuated only by the eternal repetition of the Jesus prayer. This stage is called the guard of the mind. This is a very advanced stage of ascetical and spiritual practice, and attempting to accomplish this prematurely, especially with psychophysical techniques, can cause very serious spiritual and emotional harm to the would-be hesychast. Saint Theophan the Recluse once remarked that bodily postures and breathing techniques were virtually forbidden in his youth, since, instead of gaining the Spirit of God, people succeeded only in ruining their lungs. The guard of the mind is the practical goal of the hesychast. It is the condition in which he remains as a matter of course throughout his day, every day until he dies. There is a very great emphasis on humility in the practice of the Jesus prayer, great cautions being given in the texts about the disaster that will befall the would-be hesychast if he proceeds in pride, arrogance or conceit. It is also assumed in the Hesychast texts that the Hesychast is a member of the Orthodox Church in good standing. Topic: Theosis, deification. It is from the guard of the mind that he is raised to contemplation by the grace of God. The Hesychast usually experiences the contemplation of God as light, the uncreated light are the theology of St. Gregory Palamas. The hesychast, when he has by the mercy of God been granted such an experience, does not remain in that experience for a very long time there are exceptions—see for example the life of St. Zavash the Fool for Christ 14th century, written by St. Philotheos Kokinos 14th century, but he returns to earth and continues to practice the guard of the mind. 
The uncreated light that the Hesychast experiences is identified with the Holy Spirit. Experiences of the uncreated light are allied to the acquisition of the Holy Spirit. Notable accounts of encounters with the Holy Spirit in this fashion are found in St. Simeon the New Theologian's account of the illumination of George, considered a pseudonym of St. Simeon himself, in the Conversation with Motovolov. In the life of Saint Seraphim of Sarov (1759–1833), and more recently, in the reminiscences of Elder Porfirios Byraktaris of Kafsakalivia wounded by love, pp. 27 to 31. Topic: Integration in Orthodox Church life. Hesychasts are fully integrated into the liturgical and sacramental life of the Orthodox Church, including the daily cycle of liturgical prayer of the Divine Office and the Divine Liturgy. However, Hesychasts who are living as hermits might have a very rare attendance at the Divine Liturgy see the life of Saint Seraphim of Sarov and might not recite the Divine Office except by means of the Jesus Prayer attested practice on Mount Athos. In general, the hesychast restricts his external activities for the sake of his hesychastic practice. Orthodox tradition warns against seeking ecstasy as an end in itself. Hesychasm is a traditional complex of ascetical practices embedded in the doctrine and practice of the Orthodox Church and intended to purify the member of the Orthodox Church and to make him ready for an encounter with God that comes to him when and if God wants, through God's grace. The goal is to acquire, through purification and grace, the Holy Spirit and salvation. Any ecstatic states or other unusual phenomena which may occur in the course of hesychast practice are considered secondary and unimportant, even quite dangerous. Moreover, seeking after unusual, spiritual, experiences can itself cause great harm, ruining the soul and the mind of the seeker. Such a seeking after, spiritual, Experiences can lead to spiritual delusion Rue, prelist, gr, plani, the antonym of sobriety, in which a person believes himself or herself to be a saint, has hallucinations in which he or she sees angels, Christ, etc. This state of spiritual delusion is in a superficial, egotistical way pleasurable, but can lead to madness and suicide, and, according to the Hesychast Fathers, makes salvation impossible. Mount Athos is a center of the practice of Hesychasm. Saint Pasius Velichkovsky and his disciples made the practice known in Russia and Romania, although Hesychasm was already previously known in Russia, as is attested by Saint Seraphim of Sarov's independent practice of it. <laughs> Hesychast controversy About the year 1337, Hesychasm attracted the attention of a learned member of the Orthodox Church, Balaam, a Calabrian monk who at that time held the office of abbot in the monastery of Saint Saviour in Constantinople and who visited Mount Athos. Mount Athos was then at the height of its fame and influence, under the reign of Andronicus III Paleologus and under the leadership of the Protos Simeon. On Mount Athos, Balaam encountered Hesychasts and heard descriptions of their practices, also reading the writings of the teacher in Hesychasm of St. Gregory Palamas, himself an Athenite monk. Trained in Western scholastic theology, Balaam was scandalized by Hesychasm and began to combat it both orally and in his writings. As a private teacher of theology in the Western scholastic mode, Balaam propounded a more intellectual and propositional approach to the knowledge of God than the Hesychasts taught. Balaam took exception to the doctrine entertained by the Hesychasts as to the nature of the light, the experience of which was said to be the goal of Hesychast practice, regarding it as heretical and blasphemous. It was maintained by the Hesychasts to be of divine origin and to be identical to the light which had been manifested to Jesus' disciples on Mount Tabor at the Transfiguration. This Balaam held to be polytheistic, inasmuch as it postulated two eternal substances, a visible and an invisible God. On the Hesychast side, the controversy was taken up by St. Gregory Palamas, afterwards Archbishop of Thessalonica, who was asked by his fellow monks on Mount Athos to defend Hesychasm from the attacks of Balaam. St. Gregory himself was well educated in Greek philosophy. 
Saint Gregory defended Hesychasm in the 1340s at three different synods in Constantinople, and he also wrote a number of works in its defense. In these works, Saint Gregory Palamas uses a distinction, already found in the 4th century in the works of the Cappadocian Fathers, between the energies or operations of God and the essence of God. Saint Gregory taught that the energies or operations of God were uncreated. He taught that the essence of God can never be known by his creature even in the next life, but that his uncreated energies or operations can be known both in this life and in the next, and convey to the hesychast in this life and to the righteous in the next life a true spiritual knowledge of God. In Palamite theology, it is the uncreated energies of God that illumine the hesychast who has been vouchsafed an experience of the uncreated light. In 1341, the dispute came before a synod held at Constantinople and presided over by the Emperor Andronicus III. The synod, taking into account the regard in which the writings of the pseudo Dionysius were held, condemned Balaam, who recanted and returned to Calabria, afterwards becoming a bishop in the Catholic Church. One of Balaam's friends, Gregory Akindanos, who originally was also a friend of St. Gregory Palamas, took up the controversy, which also played a role in the civil war between the supporters of John Cantacuzinus and John V Paleologos. Three other synods on the subject were held, at the second of which the followers of Balaam gained a brief victory. But in 1351 at a synod under the presidency of the Emperor John VI Cantacuzinus, Hesychast doctrine was established as the doctrine of the Orthodox Church. <laughs> <laughs> Roman Catholic opinions of Hesychasm Saint John Cassian is not represented in the Philokalia except by two brief extracts, but this is most likely due to his having written in Latin. His works Conobitical Institutions and the Conferences represent a transmittal of Evagrius Pontico's ascetical doctrines to the West. These works formed the basis of much of the spirituality of the Order of Saint Benedict and its offshoots. Hence, the tradition of St. John Cassian in the West concerning the spiritual practice of the hermit can be considered to be a tradition that is parallel to that of Hesychasm in the Eastern Orthodox Church. While Constantinople experienced a succession of councils alternately approving and condemning doctrine concerning Hesychasm considered as identified with Palamism the last of the five senses in which, according to Callistos where, the term is used, the Western Church held no council in which to make a pronouncement on the issue, and the word, Hesychasm does not appear in the Enchiridion Symbolorum et Definitionum Handbook of Creeds and Definitions, the collection of Roman Catholic teachings originally compiled by Heinrich Joseph Dominicus Denzinger. The Roman Catholic Church has thus never expressed any condemnation of Palamism, and uses in its liturgy readings from the work of Nicholas Cabasilas, a supporter of Palamas in the controversy that took place in the East. Its Liturgy of the Hours includes extracts from Cabasilus's Life in Christ on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of the fifth week of Easter in year two of the two year cycle for the Office of Readings. Western theologians have tended to reject Hesychasm, in some instances equating it with Quietism, perhaps because, Quietism is the literal translation of Hesychasm. However, according to Callistos, where, to translate Hesychasm as Quietism, while perhaps etymologically defensible, is historically and theologically misleading. Ware asserts that, the distinctive tenets of the 17th century Western quietists is not characteristic of Greek hesychasm. Elsewhere, too, Ware argues that it is important not to translate hesychasm as quietism. These theologians generally rejected the contention that, in the case of God, the distinction between essence and energies is real rather than, albeit with a foundation in reality, notional in the mind. In their view, affirming an ontological essence-energies distinction in God contradicted the teaching of the First Council of Nicaea on divine unity. According to Adrian Fortescue, the scholastic theory that God is pure actuality prevented Palamism from having much influence in the West, and it was from Western scholasticism that Hesychasm's philosophical opponents in the East borrowed their weapons. In the Catholic Encyclopedia of 1909, Simon Weiler accused Palamas's teachings that humans could achieve a corporal perception of the divinity, and his distinction between God's essence and his energies, as 
monstrous errors and perilous theological theories. He further characterized the Eastern canonization of Palamas's teachings as a resurrection of polytheism. Fortescue, also writing in the Catholic Encyclopedia, claimed that the real distinction between God's essence and operation remains one more principle, though it is rarely insisted on now, in which the Orthodox differ from Catholics. The later 20th century saw a remarkable change in the attitude of Roman Catholic theologians to Palamas, a rehabilitation of him that has led to increasing parts of the Western Church considering him a saint, even if uncanonized. John Meyendorf describes the 20th century rehabilitation of Palamas in the Western Church as a remarkable event in the history of scholarship. Andreas Andriopoulos cites the 1910 Catholic Encyclopedia article by Fortescue as an example of how Balaam's distrustful and hostile attitude regarding Hasekasm survived until recently in the West, adding that now, the Western world has started to rediscover what amounts to a lost tradition. Hasekasm, which was never anything close to a scholar's pursuit, is now studied by Western theologians who are astounded by the profound thought and spirituality of late Byzantium. Some Western scholars maintain that there is no conflict between Palamas's teaching and Roman Catholic thought. Some Western theologians have incorporated the essence energies distinction into their own thinking. For example, G. Phillips asserts that the essence energies distinction as presented by Palamas is a typical example of a perfectly admissible theological pluralism that is compatible with the Roman Catholic magisterium. Jeffrey D. Finch claims that the future of East West rapprochement appears to be overcoming the modern polemics of neo scholasticism and neo Palamism. According to Callisto's Ware, some Western theologians, both Roman Catholic and Anglican, see the theology of Palamas as introducing an inadmissible division within God, however, others have incorporated his theology into their own thinking, maintaining, as Jeffrey D. Finch reports, that there is no conflict between his teaching and Roman Catholic thought. Pope John Paul II repeatedly emphasized his respect for Eastern theology as an enrichment for the whole Church, declaring that, even after the painful division between the Christian East and the Sea of Rome, that theology has opened up profound thought-provoking perspectives of interest to the entire Catholic Church. He spoke in particular of the Hesychast controversy. The term, Hesychasm, he said, refers to a practice of prayer marked by deep tranquility of the spirit intent on contemplating God unceasingly by invoking the name of Jesus. While from a Catholic viewpoint there have been tensions concerning some developments of the practice, the Pope said, there is no denying the goodness of the intention that inspired its defense, which was to stress that man is offered the concrete possibility of uniting himself in his inner heart with God in that profound union of grace known as theosis, divinization. In art The Jesus Prayer is referred to in J.D. Salinger's pair of stories Franny and Zoe. It is also a central theme of the 2006 Russian film Ostrov. See also Notes <laughs> 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 <laughs>